air gapping the Arduino with a Raspberry Pi. Basically what we want to do is we want to develop on the desktop, but we don't want to fry our desktop when something goes horribly wrong with our Arduino. Maybe we pump in voltage, we short something out, we hook it up to a huge current, who knows. So we want to separate the Raspberry Pi and an Arduino from our desktop. Now the reason we're going to use a Raspberry Pi is because it can easily compile, send to, and so on and so forth through a wireless connection to the Raspberry, the Arduino. But we're not going to be developing on the Raspberry per se. That is, we don't need a keyboard, a mouse, and all that hooked up to it. We're going to be developing on the desktop. So if we put, say, a high volt or a high amperage battery, or this thing is a solid state relay, and we put in some horribly miswired house current straight into our Arduino, we won't put it into our Raspberry, or we won't put it through the Arduino into, say, our desktop. So I've got a Mac Pro, and it's a $5,000 machine. I don't want to fry it. I have lots of Raspberries. I don't want to fry them either, but I'd much rather fly, fry the um, Raspberries, because I have more than one. They're disposable, they're cheap, they're $25. The desktop is $5,000. And plus it has all my work on it, and I do back up, but I don't want to um, lose it. Anyway, raspberries, disposable. As I say, we're going to do everything from the desktop, except we have to initially set up the raspberry using a proper mouse keyboard and um, monitor. But after that, the raspberry can go naked. So we're, we've put in an 8 gig SD card, and I'm going to show in this particular tutorial everything you need to set up. You don't need to know anything about raspberries. So we um, copy the image that we downloaded from Rasby Raspberry. Uh, it's a Raspbian operating system. We then, we've unmounted a um, SD card, and then we ran this command line. It takes about 15 minutes. Um, we then plug in the SD card into the Raspberry. We boot it up again, I speed this up. Uh, I have it hooked up to another monitor and stuff. Uh, we bring up a terminal window and in the terminal window, we do an update. Now, this particular network, this um, Raspberry is hooked up through a physically wired network right now, but that's only temporary while we get the wireless working because my wireless does not work right out of the box. I need to do an update, an upgrade, and um, I'm speeding this up quite significantly. But again, we're going to be doing all our development from our proper desktop, not from the Raspberry. Now I need to go into the interfaces configuration and I need to say to my particular network card, don't power off. It has this habit of just going to some power saving mode, which is annoying because well, we can't connect to it when the network is turned off. So now we install WICD. This is a nice graphical interface for connecting uh, network cards and to the wireless network. And we're going to set up a static IP in a moment. I'm going to set up 150 on my network. And the reason I set up a static IP on this rather than through my router is because if we... Um, it's WICDGTK brings up this nice interface. If I set up a static through my router, I can't move the SD card from one Raspberry to another. Whereas this I, static IP will be sort of with this, no, with this SD card. So we set up a Google... DNS, just keep it all nice and clean. We set up a passphrase. I'm going to hide my passphrase, type in my passphrase to my network, and there we go, it's all set. So now we say automatically connect from now on, and we hit connect, and we're just going to do two little quickie configurations. We could have done this from outside the machine, but we're going to set up Raspi uh, config. And we're going to say, next time you boot, don't boot to anything but the text console looking for a login. This saves its little pea brain from having to waste a bunch of effort on a GUI. Plus, we don't want two GUIs running, which is what we're going to end up having if we don't do that. Now, we go up to the top. We go expand file system. And that's because when you create the SD card, you often don't use all the space. For some reason, my configuration only uses four of the eight gigs on the SD card. And Raspbian uses four gigs, so there wouldn't have been any room left. This now leaves us with four gigs. We reboot, and as you can see, uh, we boot our Raspberry to just a login prompt, which means it's not wasting its tiny brain on GUIs. 
Now we can unplug the monitor, keyboard, mouse, we're never going to use them again. And we SSH into the Raspberry, into user Pi on static IP 150. And there we are, we're in. Password Raspberry. Now we're going to install tight VNC server. Uh, it's We're speeding this stuff up. And because um, it's a bit slow, as I say, it's got a P brain. Now the newer Raspberries are getting better and better. And all development from this point on will now be done on our actual desktop, which has no physical connection. We've unplugged the wired connection to the to the Raspberry. As you can see, I've got half my SD card free, so it's um, fairly uh, lots of space, four gigs. Never going to use that. And we installed the Arduino. Now I forgot I was screen recording, and went off and did some math while I was waiting for the. Um, Thing. So I sped this up, but anyway, it's some machine learning. I was fitting a curve, needed to integrate a formula to get part of the... Anyway, so we now, as I say, we have no physical gap. So I could now cram house current through the Arduino that's connected to the Raspberry, and nothing bad would happen. So we run tight VNC server. It asks you to create a password. It's not asking for a password. It's asking you to create one. And then we go into Safari. Now you could use any VNC client. If we're on Windows, we'd use some VNC client. We go to our IP address 150 port uh, 5901. We type in that password we created when we ran type VNC server. And um, there we go. It brings up a desktop. And we now run Arduino. Now, raspberries are getting better and better. This is an older raspberry. It's pokey. It, its pea brain is particularly small, and um, the newer ones are better. Right now I think you can get two cores and one gig, probably eventually four cores and one or two gigs of RAM. Anyway, with a nice fast SD card, this could in theory be the end of the tutorial, but we're going to continue to show an alternative way to do compiling. So here I am compiling, setting it up for a nano. I plugged a nano into the thing. We'll set it for half second on, half second off. We hit upload. Now I've stopped speeding up the video. It's going at real time, so you can see just how slow doing a sketch is on the Raspberry. Now, as I say, newer Raspberry is getting faster, better, more capable. This could be the end of the tutorial. You can now develop through your VNC window, which is going over wireless, which means you cannot fry your desktop. Um, you're safe. So, if this is the case, you've got a nice shiny new Raspberry. They're always getting better, as I say. You could be done. Uh, you're welcome. Excellent way to develop. Um, the Raspberry is very simple. One of the beauties is all those weird configurations of USBs and stuff like that is consistent with the Raspberries. There's no weirdness there. Whereas every desktop is different. You have all these different USB devices. Who knows what they come up as. So there, I've compiled. It's blinking a little faster. I'll do that again. Let's bring this down to, say, I don't know, hundredth of a... 100 milliseconds, so tenth of a second. And um, the second compile tends to be a little bit faster, but still not significantly faster. Or it's not significantly fast. Um, it's loaded a few libraries and stuff like that. And remember, this is the Blink Sketch. Blink Sketch is tiny, it's nothing. If we're bringing in all kinds of crazy libraries and we've written a lot of code, this compile could be very slow, which is why we're going to want to move even more to the desktop. So there we go, it's uploaded, it's blinking. It's happy. Your desktop is safe, as I say. So, um, we'll make it blink one more time, just go a bit faster. As you can see, development is very, very simple. We've got, we only had one port choice, so as long as you chose the correct board, it's going to work. And it's great. So now, the next step that we're going to do after this, we'll send this sketch up. This is um, 20 times a second or 1 20th of a second on, 1 20th of a second off, 50 milliseconds. And we're going to um, make this blink. Yeah, there we go. Very, very fast. So now we've come back to the desktop. We're going to bump this out to half a second. And then we're going to go export compiled binary, which creates a hex file in the um, wherever you have blink test directory. So on the right, I've got a tab set up, which is my desktop. So we'll go in on my desktop to the Arduino development area. We'll go into the link test. And 
do a little thing, and there we go. See the two hex files? One has a bootloader, one doesn't. We want the one with the bootloader. So we're going to send the bootloader one up to um, the Pi, which using a thing called Secure Copy, SCP, um, it asks for the Pi's password. And there we go, it's sent. Now we go back to the Pi's SSH, where we were on the left tab, and we run this AVR dude. I suspect it's A-V-R-D-U-D-E, but I like calling it A-V-R dude we AVR dude it, which is really just going to send the hex file straight into the Raspberry. It doesn't compile it, doesn't think about it, could be gobbledygook, it just sends it. And we send the blink test. As you can see, we have it up here, it's blinking very, very fast, and as soon as we hit enter on the thing, it begins sending, and there we go. We now have a nice slow blink. And the only delay, that's not a Raspberry delay, that is a serial upload delay. That's basically how long it takes to send 8K at 56 kilobaud. So now we'll do it just one more time. We'll slow it down to go to the traditional one second blink example, which I think all raspberries have built in. And so now we're going to um, send it. Very simple. Type in the password properly is good. Password, by the way, as I think you hopefully you know by now, default password for a Raspberry's username Pi, default password Raspberry. And so we send it up to um, send it up to the thing, then we go back over here, we rerun the last command. You could just batch file all this in some way, make it all very automated, and there we go, it's up. And it's blinking one second on, one second off. Anyway, thank you very much. Subscribe. Any questions, put them in the comments. I will answer. Thank you. Have a good day.